Hello everyone. Hope you all doing well and welcome back to our Windows Server 2022 beginners video series on MSFT webcast. This is the third part of multi part mini video series on how to configure multi site active directory infrastructure with Windows Server 2022. This is RT's lab which we are going to use in this video series. We have total 4 Windows Server 2022 VMs running in Oracle VM virtual box. All VMs can communicate successfully with each other. In previous video, we have created Surat head office site and associated subnet. We have also deployed additional domain controller in Surat site. We have checked that both DCs can replicate successfully with each other. Let's go to Surat root DC SRT22-DC01. In this video, we want to create a site and subnet for Delhi branch office location and we also want to deploy an additional domain controller in Delhi branch office using IFM. In the first step, we will create an Active Directory site and subnet for Delhi branch office. On the server manager, click on tools and select Active Directory sites and services. Already, I have checked the replication between SRT22-DC01 and SRT22-DC02. To create a new Active Directory site, right click on sites and select new site. Type in the name for the new Active Directory site. Let's give name Delhi Bio. To create a new AD site, you must select the associated site link. A site link is used to manage the logical flow of replication between physical sites. The default site link is called default IP site link and it gets created when Active Directory is first installed in a forest. Active Directory sites are manually linked to each other using the site links. We will select default IP site link for our Active Directory site. Click OK. New Active Directory site has been created. Now that the Delhi PO site has been created, we need to create a subnet that specifies the boundaries of this site. In our lab setup, the Delhi network subnet is 172.31.72.0/22. So we will create a subnet according to the network range. Right click on subnets and select new subnet. In prefix, type the IP version for subnet prefix which is 172.31.72.0/22. Now select a site object for this IP subnet. In our example, Select Delhi BO site and click OK. We have now created a new subnet associated with the Delhi branch of his site. Our next step is to deploy an additional domain controller in Delhi branch of his site. To speed up the deployment of a domain controller at a remote site, we can use install from media deployment option. For that, we have to create a copy of an Active Directory database on USB drive or an external hard drive and then use it on the remote server to deploy the additional domain controller more quickly. Future replications will be done over the network but the initial replication will be done through USB media. This will save your bandwidth and also saves time. To create IFM media, you must run the antidosutil.exe command on a domain controller. On an existing domain controller, using file explorer, create a folder. For this example, I am creating a new folder on C drive with the name IFM. We will store the ADDS snapshot under this folder. Right click on start menu and select Windows PowerShell admin. At PowerShell, type command ntdsutil and hit enter key. At the ntdsutil prompt, type activate instance ntds and then press enter key. Now type ifm and then again press enter key. If you don't know how to create ifm media files, then simply type help command and hit enter key. This will give you a list of all the commands using which you can create ifm media. Since we want to create IFM media with syswall for full ADDS deployment, we will use command create syswall full. Type command create syswall full 
and specify the location to store the media files. I'll store in the folder which we have created earlier. Type location C colon slash IFM. Now press enter key to create IFM media files. The process can take a few moments depending on the size of the ADDS database. The domain controller will create a temp database located under the temp folder before writing the target IFM folder on C colon slash IFM. The IFM media creation process completed successfully. Let's go back to C drive and double click on IFM folder. Here we can see three folders, copy of ADDS database, registry entries and copy of syswall folder. You can copy this IFM folder to USB drive or external hard drive to be accessed during the deployment of the target domain controller. So we have now successfully created the IFM media files. Now we need to use these installation media files to deploy the new additional domain controller. Let's go to Dell 22 DC03 VM. This is a Delhi branch office VM. We want to promote this server as an additional domain controller using install from media option. Already I have joined this server to the active directory domain. IP address assigned to this server is 172.31.72.53. First, we will check the connectivity with our domain controllers located in Surat head office. Right click on start menu and select Windows PowerShell admin. Type ping msftwebcast.com and hit enter key. Here, msftwebcast.com is our Active Directory domain name. We can see we have pinged to msftwebcast.com domain name, but we are getting reply back from the IP address 172.18.72.52. This is the IP address of SRT22-DC02. We can confirm that our server 2022 is able to resolve the DNS name to IP address and also able to communicate with our local domain controller. Let me minimize the PowerShell and server manager dashboard. Remember, we have created this test lab in VirtualBox. So basically, all the VMs are running on one physical machine. I'm going to copy the IFM folder in this VM using the file sharing. Open run menu, type IP address 172.18.72.51 slash c dollar. Hit enter key to access this file share. Right click the IFM folder and select a copy. Let me close this and paste it on desktop. Remember, in production environment, you have to copy this folder onto the USB drive or external hard drive. Take that drive to your physical location and copy the IFM file into your server. You have to make sure that you can access the IFM file set during the deployment. Let's start AD promotion by installing the Active Directory Domain Services role on this server. Go back to Windows PowerShell, type cmd delete, install hyphen a Windows feature, hyphen name, AD hyphen domain hyphen services, hyphen include management tools. Hit enter key to run the command. This command install the ADDS server role and also install the ADDS and ADLDS server administration tools on this server. The installation of the Active Directory Domain Services has been started successfully. The installation process will take few seconds to complete. The installation of ADDS service has been completed. Go back to Server Manager dashboard and refresh the dashboard. You will see a yellow notification icon on Server Manager. Click on yellow notification icon and then click on promote this server to a domain controller. The Active Directory Domain Services Configuration Wizard starts with the Deployment Configuration page. Select the Add a Domain Controller to an Existing Domain option. This option will be selected by default. Since the server is already joined to the existing domain, there is no need to enter in domain administrator's credential. I have logged in to this server using the domain administrator's account. 
Under Credentials, you can confirm the administrator's username. Since we have single domain Active Directory Forest, the domain name is already selected. In our case, msftwebcaster.com is the name of our existing domain. Click Next to continue. On the Domain Controller Options page, options to make this DC a DNS server and a Global Catalog server are selected by default. The Delhi Bio site is also selected automatically. Active Directory will put this DC into Delhi branch of his site. Active Directory knows this because we have created the IP subnet associated to a Delhi site. This is based on the IP address of this server and the subnet 172.31.72.0/22, which we have created earlier for Delhi branch of his site. Now enter a password for the Directory Services Restore mode. This password allows an administrator to repair or recover an Active Directory database. After entering DSRM password, click Next. Since a DNS server rule is being also configured, you will be warned that a delegation for this DNS server cannot be created. This can be safely ignored. Click Next. On the Additional Options page, check the box for Install from Media. Under the Path field, specify or browse to the path of the folder containing the IFM data files. Let's browse the path and select the IFM folder which we have stored on the desktop. The wizard will verify the path and content of the files. Now choose where you want your DC to replicate from. Active Directory can replicate from any domain controller or a specific one. For this example, we will keep it to default any domain controller. Later on in upcoming videos, we will change this settings. Now click Next to continue. On the Paths page, confirm the location for ADDS database files, log files and syswall. You can either use the default locations or select another folder of your choice. In this example, we will go with the default locations. Click Next. Confirm your selections on Review Options screen and then click Next to continue. Windows will then perform a prerequisites check. All good, we can promote this server to be an additional domain controller in msftwebcast.com. Click on Install to begin the installation process. The process will promote the server using the offline IFM data files to speed up the promotion process. The installation takes few moments to complete. The process is completed successfully and our server has been configured as an additional domain controller. Now the server will reboot automatically. After reboot, sign into your server computer using the domain administrator account. This server is now successfully added as an additional domain controller in our existing Active Directory domain using IFM option. On Server Manager, click on Tools and select Active Directory Users and Computers. Expand Domain Name and click on Domain Controllers OU. Verify that Dell 22-DC03 Domain Controller is listed there with the other two domain controllers. We can also confirm that Dell 22-DC03 Domain Controller is in Delhi branch of his site. Next, we want to check the status of Active Directory replication between these three domain controllers. Click on Tools and select Active Directory Sites and Services. Let me maximize the window, expand Sites and expand Delhi branch of his site. Expand Servers. Here we can see a server Dell 22-DC03. Expand it and click on NTDS Settings. Right-click the NTDS Settings, All Task and click on Check Replication Topology. Click on OK. Right-click and select Refresh. Here we can see we have one automatically generated replication link. Right-click on automatically generated replication link from DC01 to DC03 and select Replicate Now. This is going to be inter-site replication. This is the replication between domain controllers and different Active Directory sites. 
click OK. We have high speed network connection in our test lab, so replication will be faster. In production environment, intersite replication will take time based on connection speed and replication schedule. Let's check replication status of all domain controllers. Expand Surat HO, expand servers. Right click on NTDS settings, all tasks, check replication topology, click OK, right click and select refresh, right click on automatically generated link, select replicate now and ADDS has replicated this connection. This is intrasite replication link. It is coming from SRT22 DC02 to DC01. Let's check the same replication link from DC02. Right click the NTDS settings, all tasks, check replication topology. Click OK. Right click and select refresh. Right click on automatically generated link, select replicate now. Perfect. Let me again right click here and select refresh. Ok, I have checked the replication status on all the domain controllers. On Dell 22 half and DC03, we have one automatically generated replication link from DC01. On SRT22 half and DC01, uh, we have one replication link. Uh, this is automatically generated link coming from SRT22 half and DC02. On uh, DC02, I have also checked the replication topology. Uh, click OK and select Refresh. Here we have two automatically generated link coming from SRT22 DC01 and Dell22 DC03. One link is coming from Surat HO site and another one from Delhi branch office. So currently all three domain controllers can replicate with each other successfully. But it is not optimized yet. There are few things which we will modify and configure in the next video. That's all for this video. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions and suggestions regarding this video, please let me know in the comment section. Thank you all for watching this video. Have a nice day.